Hi guys, it's In The Money, and today we're going to talk about how the Fed pivot that might be coming in 2023 could affect your portfolio in kind of unexpected ways. I did a write-up on TradingView about everything I'm about to talk about, so you can kind of follow along in the charts as well as my write-up. Uh, the link to it will be in the description and probably the pinned comment. A Fed pivot is when the Fed pivots from being hawkish to dovish. Hawkish means they're increasing interest rates. Dovish means they're decreasing interest rates. So it's that pivoting point at which they change from increasing interest rates to lowering interest rates. Typically, you would think that with the Fed increasing interest rates that you would see a decline in equities. Historically, that's not the case. Historically, equities typically do fine while interest rates are rising. And the reason for that is because the Fed is raising interest rates to moderate the economy, to keep the economy from having these huge booms and busts, but also to put rounds in the magazine that they can slap in their SKS and start unloading during a time of recession. If they're at zero interest rates and a recession rolls around, well, then they're out of ammo. They're gonna be shooting blanks. Really, the fall in equities comes when the Fed pivots, when they start decreasing interest rates. Because when the Fed pivots is when they start unloading that SKS to stimulate the economy, to cushion the blow, to make that trough of uh, the recession or the business cycle not as uh, deep and dirty. But at the same time that they're doing that, they're trying to stimulate that, the stock market's reacting to all this negative economic news or like the Great Recession, the financial system is collapsing or the dot-com bubble, you know? The stock market's reacting to all of that. They don't really react to the fact that in general, decreasing interest rates are, is actually good for the stock market. And it is, you just can't see it because it's declining because of other factors. So there's an indirect correlation between equities and interest rates in which interest rates can rise and equities can rise at the same time just fine. But typically you'll see equities fall when the Fed pivots and they start decreasing. So that's the indirect correlation. The real direct correlation is between equities and economic data or whatever is going wrong at the time. That's the direct correlation. When the financial system is collapsing, that's why equities are decreasing in valuation. It's not because the Fed is decreasing interest rates. So there's been a lot of chatter on the internet about how when the Fed pivots, that's generally when you see the actual market crash. And I thought, yeah, that's a good point. But we referenced 2008 a lot and we referenced the dot-com bubble a lot, but we don't very often go further back in time than that. But the Great Recession and the dot-com bubble, they're very different situations than what's happening today. In the Great Recession, uh, inflation was not an issue. In a dot-com bubble, inflation was not an issue. And the cause, causes of both of those catastrophes were entirely different. So I decided, let's take a look at the time period in which inflation was highest, which is like mid-1960s to the early 1980s, and see what the Fed did and how the stock market reacted and see if we can apply that to what's going on today. Okay, so here we are looking at what looks like very confusing charts, but at the top we have the S&P 500. Uh, this one is the Fed funds rate, the target interest rate. Um, the middle one is uh, inflation as a percentage, and the bottom one is unemployment. You can see the date at the bottom there. We're looking at October of 65. Back then through the 60s, the mid 60s into the 70s, the Fed was using inflation as a way to keep unemployment down. That's through this idea called the Phillips curve in which there's a negative correlation between inflation and unemployment. So they're allowing inflation to rise in order to keep unemployment low. And that was kind of their tactic to, in doing so, was keeping inflation high. So they didn't really attack inflation at all. They used it as a tool to try to keep unemployment low. And while that can work, it fell apart eventually. So we can see here the Phillips curve actually playing out in action. This is inflation. Remember, this is the unemployment at the bottom. Inflation is increasing into, into 1966 and unemployment is decreasing. Same here in 1971, you can see that inflation is decreasing and unemployment is increasing. However, eventually this idea of managing economic policy through the Phillips curve kind of fell apart. You can see that inflation, this middle graph, increases along with unemployment, at which point your economic policy is kind of falling apart. And things didn't really get much better as far as inflation goes. When we're reaching the 1980s, we hit peak inflation around 14% and unemployment was rising. They were also trying to do the, uh, the stop and go method. It might be kind of hard to see in this graph, but they would increase interest rates um, when inflation was high um, and then decrease it when um, unemployment was low. And th they were doing that throughout this whole period. And it wasn't really uh, effective 
in managing all of this. So th th those economic policies were not doing a great job. You can see in 1980, inflation peaked around 14%. And in 1981, August of 1981, right here on this date, Paul Volcker took over as chairman of the Fed. They initially, he tried to control inflation through different policies other than mon monetary policies, like economic policies, but it did not prove effective. And eventually, he just decided, that's it. I'm going to maintain a high interest rate environment until inflation has been taken care of because it's been out of control, not steady for like nearly two decades. So one, that reduced inflationary expectations. And it also proved effective in reducing inflation because he raised interest rates very quickly and held them there. And you can see that here in 1981, when interest rates were very high, inflation began to decline and unemployment began to rise, which is part of the Phillips curve. And it's also understandable that when interest rates are aggressively increased, you're going to have naturally a decrease in inflation because you're cooling off the economy. But when you're cooling off the economy, you're going to have an increase in unemployment and a risk of a recession. And in 1981, we entered a recession and you can see that as the stock market started to decline. But as we entered a recession, the Fed pivoted, decreasing interest rates to start stimulating the economy. And that's where that indirect correlation comes between the pivot and the decrease in uh, equity valuations. And down went inflation. We were no longer in double digits or near the uh, target rate or what, what it is today, around 2%. And eventually unemployment stabilized around something a little bit more reasonable than what it peaked at, which was around 10.8%. So what can we take away from this? I think there's a few things. It's very applicable to today. Uh, this environment was, I would think, considerably worse uh, considering the fact that inflation was at double digits and inflation was correlated with unemployment. Right now, unemployment is ridiculously low. It's somewhere around 3%. Here, unemployment was peaking around whatever I just said, 10.8%. So this was a worse economic uh, condition, but similar in the fact that the real goal was battling inflation. And the only way that the Fed was able to successfully battle inflation was when Paul Volcker decided to raise interest rates and hold them there and show no mercy until inflation came down. And yes, it resulted in an, a recession in 1981 that caused a decline in the uh, in equities and was correlated with that pivot, but it got it over with. It decreased inflation back to the target rate and it allowed unemployment to yeah, spike up during that recession and then go back down. So when we correlate that to today, Jerome Powell has been vicious about making inflation his main target. And he spoke in specifically in his last speech about how we've learned from history that if we let off the gas too soon, or if we're too, if we start cutting rates too soon, or if you don't hold rates long enough, it can cause inflation to become entrenched and we can may have to raise rates much higher in order to get inflation back down again. History cautions strongly against prematurely loosening policy. And I'll close by saying that we will stay the course until the job is done. And it can cause a deeper and dirtier recession. And you can see here that the, the uh, Fed target rate was like almost 20%, while the target rate we're looking at right now is around 5%. Now we're talking about nominal rates, but my point is still the same. So the ultimate point here is that, yes, the worst happens when the Fed pivots. So this is just 1981 where the Fed pivots, right? It starts decreasing interest rates and the stock market starts decreasing in, in valuation. Here's the 1987 crash right there. That's actually really interesting. You should read up on that. Uh, I think that one was the one that was call, caused mostly by algos. Very fascinating. Um, yeah, look into that. Here's the uh, dot-com bubble, and this is this is SPY. This is not QQQ. We'll take a QQQ in a little bit. But same idea. Here's the Fed funds rate, and then right when they start pivoting, you can see that the stock market starts collapsing. And here's the Great Recession. Right when the Fed funds rate starts decreasing, right when the Fed pivots, the stock market starts decreasing in valuation. And of course, unemployment rose quite significantly. So here's today. Here's the Fed funds rate. Here's uh, inflation right there. We're sitting at 7.7%, right? That was the last reading of inflation. And uh, unemployment is really, really low. It's at 3.3%. It will not stay that low. It will go up. We will see that in 2023, that unemployment will increase. And once it starts increasing, you will see that this Fed funds rate will come down. But similarly to the other crises that we looked at before, you're going to see that Jerome Powell is going to slow and then stop interest rates. And he said that in his last speech. Is to hold on longer at a, at a, at a high level and not, not um, you know, 
loosen policy too early. He's going to slow the increase in, of interest rates, 50 basis points for December, slow it in the spring of 2023, and then stop it entirely. And then you're going to see unemployment come up and inflation go down, Phillips curve coming back again. And then you're going to see him start cutting interest rates. And the question is, when he starts cutting interest rates, when he does that pivot, is that when we're going to see the worst of the equity uh, stock market crash? Because historically, that's what we've seen. And even in a similar period in the early 1980s, it was the same scenario. The pivot led or was correlated to um, indirectly equity valuations decreasing. So there's a couple of things that gave me pause as to whether or not this would still be the case as the prior three times. Um, the first one is we've seen a lot of sell-off right here. A lot of the selling has already happened. So I kind of wondered like, maybe the stock market has already learned its lesson and it, it knows what's coming and it's kind of selling in advance. But if we look at QQQ during the uh, dot-com crash, which makes more sense to look at QQQ during the dot-com crash because it's uh, it was a it was a tech crash. You can see that even before the Fed pivot, they started decreasing interest rates. The stock market had already decreased by about 48%. You can see that right there, 48.96%. And then after the Fed had pivoted and started decreasing interest rates, you can see that the stock market, or at least in the NASDAQ, fell by another 70% after that. So when we look at today and we've already seen some sell-off, I'm not sure it means a whole lot. It could. I'm not a crystal ball here. It could mean something, but looking in the past, we've seen a scenario, the dot-com bubble, in which a significant portion of selling came up front, and then a much more significant portion came after the Fed pivot. So it makes me think that the worst is yet to come. And if the Fed is going to stall interest rates in early 2023 and then start decreasing in maybe late 2023, then it's likely that we have not hit the bottom and that we may hit the bottom in you know mid late 2023 or 2024 it depends on when they they actually pivot i think because of how swift jerome powell's actions are and have been and how he took a lesson from paul volcker and the mistakes that were made between 1965 and 1982ish i think his his decisiveness as far as inflation goes his reaction to inflation is going to reduce the pain across the board. Going to bring inflation down quickly because he was decisive. It's going to cause equity markets to rebound faster. It's going to cause unemployment to spike and go back down faster um, because he's nipping everything in the butt up front. He's not playing any games. He's not going up and down with the Fed funds rate. It's just up, flat, and then when unemployment starts going up and more unfavorable economic data starts coming in, it'll start going back down. And when that happens, because of all the economic data coming in, it's likely we'll see a continued and maybe more drastic straighter down drop um, in equities. And, uh, and then we'll see quite a quick rebound. So that's my thesis going forward. Is that what's going to happen? Who knows? But just looking at what history has told us, it, it seems quite possible. And I, uh, I might eat those words at some point because you never know. You know, everyone tries financial markets. It's difficult to predict, but it's important to put your ideas out there just so people can get a broader viewpoint of things. And maybe they'll spring another idea off of what I had, to, I have to say here. So this is not the end of things. Things are definitely going to get more interesting from here because this is going to start slowing down and stalling out and then decrease eventually. Inflation is going to start coming down. You can already see it's coming down and you're going to see unemployment start going up. We've barely seen it tick up a little bit, but it's going to start coming up. And then you're going to see unemployment go back down. You're going to see inflation go back down to the target rate and you're going to see um, eventually they'll start raising rates again as the economy stabilizes. And as a result, overall, you're going to see the stock market rebound. Now, when that will be is a little bit hard to pinpoint, but because of Jerome Powell's decisiveness, I think it's going to be like sooner than later. I mean, if we think about the 1982 issue, that was a lot worse. Inflation was a lot higher. Interest rates are higher. Um, unemployment was correlated with inflation. It was quite significant. And yet the recession and downturn in equities was not very long. It was not, you know, five years plus. If we go back here in 1981, it goes from, you know, the drop in equities at least starts in April of 1981 and ends in August of 1982. So it's a year and a half. So these things, it takes time to play out. This is not going to be something that happens overnight. I do continue to believe that there's a path to a soft or softish landing. I do believe that. And, it's and the, the definition landing. of a softish landing is what? Soft. Unemployment goes up a little, but we don't have a recession? Yeah, uh, unemployment goes up, but not it's not a, it's not a hard landing. It's not a severe recession. You know, you can think of 
unemployment going up, but not not you know really spiking as it does in some in some uh, recession. Thank you guys so much. Uh, I love each and every one of you in a special and unique way. In the money is out. Mm-hmm.